In this morning's edition of A Veteran's Voice, we take to the skies over Europe during World War II. Keith Bratton, a pilot of a B-24 Liberator bomber, helped to deliver a crushing blow to Germany's war machine. It was the beginning of a flight career that began with planes and ended with missiles. Look at you. Notice how thin I am. You're looking good. Keith Bratton is 98 years old. My first grade picture. Do you remember the teacher's name? Miss Venard, lovely lady. A lifetime of service and family aided by a sharp memory. This is my crew picture in England while we're flying our bombing missions. Bratton remembers enlisting in the U.S. Army Air Corps on April 12, 1942. And following nearly 18 months of training in eight different locations, he was ready to fly B-24 Liberator bombers over Europe. So he went to Kansas. They flew up a brand new B-24 bomber from uh, Dallas, Texas. A second lieutenant in the 395th bomb group, Bratton landed in Wales and prepared for his first mission in support of D-Day. We uh, lost an engine and was unable to stay in formation, so I had to turn around and come home, so back to England. But there were plenty of other opportunities. Bratton flew 31 missions that included a close call with a German fighter. He's looking at me like this, and I'm looking out at him like that, and uh, my gunners were really blasting him. I could see the knocking chunks off of his engine. Hundreds of bombers would fill the skies in the late stages of the war, and so would the anti-aircraft fire. Pop, 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 and you had to wait for that fourth one, pop. Keith would eventually return home, became a flight instructor, and got married to his first wife, Babs. But soon after, the military came calling again, asking him to fly in another war. So off I go to Japan, flew into uh, Korea with my transport carrying whatever needed to be carried. When his service in the 61st Transport Carrier Group ended, he stepped up to the C-124. Great big things biggest uh, transport we ever had. And I was one of the first pilots to uh, uh, learn to fly them. He was also part of a secret mission constructing the first early warning system between Alaska and Greenland. Every uh, 200 miles we'd have to build a radar site. We were concerned about uh, Russia coming over the North Pole. It was all secret at that time. This former Army captain, now a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, was put in charge of delivering the first ballistic missile nuclear warheads to positions in England. Missiles became the big thing. They sent a bunch of us American guys over there with the nuclear warheads. We were the custody of the nuclear warhead and the English were the custody of, of the missiles. The Thor missile, though, was soon replaced by the Titan and Atlas intercontinental missiles, and that launched his career even higher as the ballistic missile staff officer at Vandenberg Air Force Base. He ended 28 years of service in Missouri as the squadron officer for the 1st Strategic Air Division, overseeing the B-58, the first supersonic bomber that never flew a mission. They were never used except to train. The B-52 came along to... Uh, replaced him. Once he left the military, Keith would lose his first wife to cancer. But shortly after arriving in Bakersfield back in 2003, he ran into his second wife. Boy, I just uh, fell right in love all over again. And it took me a whole year of heavy wooing to uh, before we got married again. Oh, Jewel, Jewel and I over in Hawaii. Did you ever f land there when you were flying at all? Many did times. Did you? I hated the place. <laughs> did you really? More pictures, memories, and a simple mission to keep flying high with his feet firmly on the ground. And we want to hear your veterans' story. Send us information on someone who served, a picture, some basic information, or does your veteran need a landscaping makeover at their home? Send us your nominations for either to mike at kero.com.